All right, what I'd like to do now is just kind of run through some of the the real straightforward kind of mark making that we can do with watercolor paints um, just to kind of get you used to how does this stuff move around on the paper. Um, so this is going to be review for most of you, but it's, it doesn't hurt to kind of see it again. So I'm going to show us a couple of different techniques on how to, how to get different effects on, on our paper here. So I've got some clean water here. I had my pigments, mixing tray, my paper. Uh, the first technique I'm going to show us here is called uh, dry on dry. So in this instance, I'm going to just mix up some, some paint, some pigment. So I just take some clean water, come into this dry cake and kind of mix this pigment up. Go over to my mixing tray carry some over. I can add some water to it if I want. Get the consistency, the value that I want. Like that. And that's going to work just fine. Then I'm going to take a dry brush. And in this case, I'm going to use a flat just because it's going to, um, be able to you'll be able to see the effect much better on this video. So I'm going to have take a dry brush. I'm not going to dip it in the water first. Okay, I'm just going to have it be dry, and my paper is dry. And I'm just going to come over here and grab a little bit of the pigment on the, the tip of the brush. And when I come to the paper now, you'll see that the pigment is coming down on, onto the paper in real dry strokes. I can actually build up some really interesting textures this way and it almost makes like a cross hatching. Can you see that? It's a really beautiful and it starts to get uh, this real beautiful feathery kind of way of, of adding, adding tone to that and I could even mix other colors into that if I want to. Again using that dry, fairly dry brush. And I'm just building up tones like this. Okay, so this is that's called dry on dry. The next one I'm going to show us is the wet on dry. So I'm going to take my brush now and I'm going to mix up my pigment again. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to, to brush like this. And you can see how dense this pigment starts to come down. It's really, really super rich, very beautiful and vibrant. But these edges are all going to be really crisp and clean. Right? If I draw a line like this, it's going to stay sharp because the paper is, is dry and it's just absorbing the water. It's not bleeding out like this. So I can get some actually some really terrific effects like this, but I have a lot of control over how I'm moving this pigment around on the paper. All right, and it's going to be fairly flat. Look at that. I did all this and there's no streaks in that pigment here at all. Um, because I'm working on the dry paper and I'm just moving the water around. Um, <clears throat> if I'm doing dry on dry, also, I'm going to remember that it does keep those sharp edges. So then I can use that to my advantage. Like so for instance, let's say I'm going to paint a cube here and I want very straight sides to this cube. You can see how I can lay this pigment down like this and it's not bleeding. It's not going all over the place. It's staying right exactly where I put it. So I can make a very very structured form like this. Um, maybe I'm going to come with a different color for a different side. For my cube. But this form is staying all with the paint is staying within the confines of, of my brush strokes. It's not bleeding out. It's staying really sharp 
clean edged lines here. Um, let's see. Let's pick a different, even a different color, just for fun. All right. See how sharp those lines are. can begin to paint this out just like this and this is wet on dry since that paper is dry it's not going to bleed right, and I can create all my beautiful tones this way uh, the next thing I want to show us is wet on wet which is a, a different way of, of working right so let's say I have an area and I'm putting down some wet paint like this. Well, while that is still wet, maybe I'm going to come in with a different color. Okay, while that is still wet, then I'm going to come in with this, this orange. Mix up some orange. Now watch what happens when I put this on here. See how that paint is bleeding out. It's spreading out throughout the, the rest of the moisture in this area. Even though I just put a, a dot like that, it's spreading out because the water is moving this pigment around. And this is wet on wet. And we're going to get these feathery, really soft edged blends happening here if we go wet on wet. Okay. See how it's spreading out on its own. If I can get these really interesting blends this way. Another way that we can do a wet on wet is by actually just taking some clean water and brushing down on my paper and then I might come in then with my pigment on this clean water and then drop the pigment down and again you can see how it's bleeding out it's really a very feathery line very very soft and feathery edges which is very different than what we have with the wet on dry up here so you need to understand how the how the paper works and how the paint works so that you can get the effects that you're shooting for. Okay? Now another thing that we can do is uh, another method of dry on or, or wet on dry right here instead of on dry paper now and blank paper if I have a place where I've painted and I've let that dry then I can come back again with a, some color and I can begin to paint on here and again since the paper is dry even though it has paint on it I can get really sharp edges to the thing I'm painting right and it's not going to bleed. So maybe I want to build up different tones, different colors, and, and different sharp uh, defined areas on top of a tone. I can lay that down, lay down the background color, let it dry, and then come back in with another color on top of that and still end up with my good sharp lines like I had here and here. And it's not going to bleed like it is here where it's wet. Okay, so that those are dry on dry, dry on wet on dry, wet on wet, and different ways of working this way. Um, I'm going to keep these videos really short, uh, so I'm going to stop here. I'll come back and show us some some different techniques on how to work with our watercolors on the paper, and then uh, in our final videos, I'll show us how to do some paintings. Okay, so. 
I'll be back in just a moment. 